This is Set It with NetworkingForums.com. If you guys have any questions over the topics covered in this video, feel free to reach out to us at networking-forums.com. Morning, everybody. This is a quick video on how to add an ESX host to VMware's vSphere web client. So what we've got here, we've got a fresh install of the VMware vSphere web. And let me enter my credentials. And with the VMware, with the web client, if you've never entered anything other than uh, your, uh, if you haven't entered anything like Active Directory or created any users, right out the gate, your default username is gonna be administrator at vSphere.local. Now you can do things and we'll cover later in a different video of how to integrate Microsoft Active Directory services, or you could also create local logins that will be Posted on the actual vSphere image. So what you see here is we've got a brand new fresh install. Go ahead and get rid of all these getting started pages because we're pros at this, right? So the object here is to add an ESXi host to be managed by the vSphere web client. So we'll go ahead and start by clicking on host and clusters. And it'll alert us, it says, before you can even consider adding an ESX host to here, what you'll need to do is first create a data center. So let's go ahead and do that. And the data center is kind of like, it's just a step up uh, from the actual ESX host. If we were to put them in parent-child relationships, the, the data center helps you organize all of your ESX hosts. So in our home lab here, we'll need to create a data center name. Now let's come up with something incredibly intuitive and creative. Let's name this home. Excellent, very nice. Now the data center has been created, we can start adding hosts to it. Do that by start clicking on the data center and add a host. And let's go ahead and enter it by the DNS name. Now. If you're gonna do this, you gotta make sure you have two things set up. You gotta make sure that your DNS record exists for your ESX host. And you also have to make sure that your vSpinner, vSpinner, your vCenter server is pointed to use that DNS name. Uh, I'm sorry, your DNS server is. So right here it's telling me that it cannot connect to the specified host. VM ESX1, the host may not be available or on the network. What this was really telling you is that I screwed the pooch on the DNS setup. For whatever reason, the vSpinner, vCenter, I had a really hard time saying that today, may not be using my DNS server. And it looks like it is. Let me hop over into actual DNS setup here. It's very interesting stuff. VM ESX one. And it looks good to go. It looks like for whatever reason my V Center <laughs> my V Center is not using my DNS server. And that's okay. I'll get over it. Let's go back and let's just enter this by the IP address of the ESX host. So one dot fifty one. Here we are. It'll ask me to accept the SHA hash, and I like it. And I will verify, assign the license. All right. Very good. So as you can see right up here, the fresh install, I don't have any license. I'm still in a um, trial period. So you'll see that vCenter is alerting me and says, hey, you got expiring license keys. And I say, thank you. I, well, I know this well. I don't have the thousands of dollars to give you, so I'm gonna continue with my trial. And the status bar tells me that the host has been successfully added to the home data center. Let's expand the tree. And there's our boy right there, 10.0.1.51. 
And it alerts us, it says that the quick stats are not up to date. And what this means basically is that the vCenter v -Center is now managing the host, but the all the statistics from the host, such as CPU utilization, uh, memory, or even the data store uh, utilization is, is not up to date. It's still trying to gather all the statistics. As you can tell, you see I have 25 virtual machines. Uh, most of those are spun up right now. Uh, there's no way under the sun that there is zero, <laughs> zero megahertz used for these or RAM. We can just keep refreshing these guys if we'd like. And see, oh, it's populated. So we can expand to the host and see all the virtual machines that are up and active. And here we are. From here, now that this is managed within the vSphere web client, we can do everything that we need to as far as administrating these hosts. We can change their networks. We can uh, you know, attach a different uh, device to it. Whatever it is that we need to do, create snapshots, all those goodies. It's now managed within the vSphere web client.